I'm Joanna Garzilli, award-winning author and life coach. Welcome to the Looking Glass podcast. The truth is, they don't want me there. That was the epiphany, the awareness that flashed in my mind's eye when you were reflecting with me last time. They don't want me there. And that's why I don't want to be there. I think maybe they've struggled with how at first when we got on in the relationship together, it was good. There was a lot that was good. Even when it was a tough learning curve for me, stepping into the retirement industry, not something I would have thought I would have ever worked in and doing stuff in taxes. But I got to say, it was great. I had some really amazing experiences and I love being part of the team. And then for a few months, in this past few months, I could feel that I wasn't really appreciated or wanted by my main boss anymore. I could really feel it. And I would pretend that I couldn't feel it, even though I'm highly intuitive. So I knew, and he knew, I'm glad that I stuck around because I was able to do certain things and help and open doors and make introductions that if I'd left there, that wouldn't have happened. And so the part of me that goes, Joanna, well, why didn't you just leave then at that point? Because I knew I wasn't done. Sometimes things are difficult, but we continue in a relationship, whether it's with work, love, friendship, because we need to be of service to someone else, or we need to learn certain things from each other. Or we need to help someone get to where they need to get to next in their lives. There is a symbiotic experience that's happening and there's growth that's occurring. So when I had had that really heavy feeling and a sense of moving on, but I hadn't, I know it's because I wasn't done. So that raises the question for me now. Is it that I have not moved on because... There's still a little bit more for me to do there. And so that's why I do continue to take actions to help. But I just feel torn apart. When I was listening to Marie Forleo yesterday share about when her body was screaming at her to make some changes. And then she ended up having this emergency hysterectomy. That was terrifying because I thought if I carry on not listening to my body that is screaming at me to move on, what will happen to me? How will I make myself sick? And four weeks ago, I'm coming up like just under four weeks ago, when I said, I want to be a fighter. I want to be really, really strong. I want to be agile. I want to be fit. That was when I got a calf strain, grade two, in Muay Thai, and then I was in crutches for the next three days. And then I was limping for two and a half weeks. And now I'm walking now, and I'm getting ready to go back into training. But I think that it's just knowing one's limitations and that doing a little bit each day can be enough. Normally I'm not lost for words, But I'm lost for words right now because I'm at an impasse. It's as if I'm looking at a mirror within a mirror within a mirror. And there's all these different facets. It makes me think of the scene from Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon when he's fighting against a nemesis. And everywhere he turns, where he's trying to see that enemy that he sees a reflection of himself, and not just one reflection of himself. He sees an infinite amount of his self, infinite selves, searching, searching for that outside enemy, and yet being faced with himself. 
So what am I looking for? What are you looking for? Who do I want to be free from? I mean, will I really feel free? Will my anxiety totally be gone when I move on and quit my job? Or maybe I'll get fired from my job. The anxiety, it's still going to be there. I see it, but it'll be less. It won't be as frequent. I'll have gone through the cycle of this experience. And if I commit to self-reflection, when I get tested again in the future, I will be more discerning about the choices that I make. Can you think of a situation, an opportunity that's come along when you're in a good feeling place and you dive into it? without consideration, because it looks fantastic, or because you don't want to have to address any red flags. But it's important not to rush things. It's important to do things in a right way. Thank you for taking time to reflect with me. I know I I feel it's been very uncomfortable, but I hope that your own wisdom and intuition has come forth and spoken to you, comforted you, given you insight. I'm Joanna Garzelli. Thank you for reflecting with me. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you for telling your friends and loved ones about Looking Glass podcast and following the show. You can also learn more about working privately with me and booking a Looking Glass reading or reflection session at looking-glass.me.